<laughs> G'day, Mebo Five here. I've got a cracker of a show for you this week. It's a little bit late, I do apologise, but it's a two-part series. So part one will be in the description for part two, and part two will be in the description for part one. But, um, yeah, let's get stuck into it, eh? Me cast iron collection. Roger. How's it going, Scully? Yeah, good, my part, good. When are you going to get this chimney done, mate? Yeah, I don't know. I'll have to get it done before next winter, eh? Yeah, I think you will, mate. Yeah. So what are we going to do this week, mate? Yeah, I don't know. Why don't you do your cast iron collection, my part? Yeah, that's not a bad idea, Scully. Let's start off with um, the latest restoration. Rightio, here it is. This was done last weekend. Yeah, so that was not a bad restoration, that one, Scully. Yeah, my pa, that was done for your barber, wasn't it? Yeah, mate, my local sheep shearer. So let's take them back to where it all began. The very first restoration and the kick-off to my cast iron collection. All right, here we go. So, bet mate, tell us how that went again, mate. Yeah, well, back in um, August 2015, I was talking to a mate from work and um, never owned a camp oven. Wanted a camp oven. Got a few now, mate. Yeah, so, um, anyway, the next day, I found this in my locker. Yep, and that's what led me onto the path of finding out how to restore it and how to make it brand new. So, let's start with the collection, eh? Right on, McLeod. All right, so here it is. Very first camp oven. So, she was rusty as, cleaned her up, learned how to do it, watching YouTube videos. It took me about eight hours with a scrubbing brush, but yeah, after I bought it out of the oven, this is what it looked like. And from that time, I was hooked. Okay, the next uh, two camp ovens here. Uh, my brother-in-law actually said these were both rusty. I think this is the picture of the uh, 10 inch. They were both in that same sort of condition. So basically, the, um, he said, if I, clean, if I clean this one up for him, which is a 12 inch, same size as this, I can have the 10 inch. So they're my next two camp ovens. Okay, the next oven I got was this one here. Now this had a different lid on it. So I thought, oh, I don't know what that is. It's actually got a round lid on it. So this is a Dutch oven. So I've got a 10 inch Dutch oven. And at the same time I made that purchase, I also bought my first fry pan, but we'll see that a little later. Okay, now this one here, I actually picked this up. I bought two 10 inch camp ovens. I gave the other one away to a mate from work. And this one here is an Albion number 10. So it was made in Maryborough, Queensland, and the foundry closed in 1904 from what I've researched. So how many meals have been cooked on this one? My pride and joy. My, one of my regular users, I love cooking damper on this because how many people have had a damper in the last 110 years? Love it. These two fellas here, me two 14 inch ovens, they're the biggest ovens I got. Now, my son-in-law's old man um, told me about these two, so what I did find out too, that the markings and the makings is the same as my first 12 inch I got. So 12 inch, 14 inch. So the search is on for legs for 10. This little 10 inch oven here was given to me by a mate and um, she's sort of got a Dutch oven lid but it's got the camp oven ring on it so however when I clean this one in the molasses tank there's a bit of a crack in it so I'm gonna have a go welding it up but good little oven okay I'll put this on the table but she's getting a bit long in the tooth but um this one here it's a red enamel 10 inch Dutch oven it's got the basting nipples in the on the lid so uh, this was bought from a dear old lady. She said it was just too heavy for us. So, okay, my next one is my fire engine red 12 inch. So she's been in a few a few things. Great user, uh, easy to clean up, and no seasoning. Enamel. Another enamel oven. Then I got this square Dutch oven. It's got ribs on the inside. You can use it as a fry pan. It's got a, um, a little thing there. This is made by Campfire. So, good little, good little oven, that. 
And then, of course, there's the oven featured in last week's video. My first poiki, South African pot. Okay, so that's about it for all the ovens and all that. Now, um, we'll just clear the table and we'll get into the irons and the griddles and a few pots. Alrighty, she's just started raining puppies and kittens. Not quite cats and dogs yet, but I've got the older cooper on to protect the head. So let's get into the irons. This is basically just all my miscellaneous sort of cast. Okay, so we'll start off with this double jaffa line. Now this double jaffa line was actually the first piece of cast iron I ever received off my father. So, but it wasn't until I started restoring them and getting right into it that I actually cleaned this one up and we've used it quite a bit. I'm chucking this one in too because she's an iron. She's cast aluminium though. So, um, I got this off um, Dad for Father's Day. Okay, the next iron I got is this three-piece Griswold American cast Jaffa iron. This is the small base. They started bringing out larger bases, higher bases when gas stoves come in. Okay, the next lot are my seven stick cornbread pans. This one's a Griswold, manufacturing from 1865 to 1957. My next seven corn stick pan is a Wagner Ware, manufacturing from 1891 to 1952. The last seven stick corn pan is a Lodge, and now it started in 1896, and they're still manufacturing today from the same place, South Pittsburgh, Tennessee. This is the heaviest one of those three corn stick pans. The next two are my gem scone trays. This one is a no name. And this one I picked up is a Metas, an Australian company. The foundry opened in Sydney in 1902. I don't know when it closed down, but this is a Metas. They also did camp ovens and fry pans and stoves and all sorts of stuff. So Australian vintage. Now two hands for this one. I'm actually collecting these as you can see. These are cast iron plates and when I've got enough to feed the family I'm doing sizzling Mongolian beef. Now the next little gem tray or scone tray that I got, I got this from my daughter and this is a little love heart one. So it was actually bought just before Mother's Day and we hooked it up for Mother's Day. Next one on the list is this Cast iron baking dish. I believe it comes with a lid. I have seen one with a lid, but I will keep my eyes open. This was given to me by my father. Now I've got no brand name or nothing for this one. It's a little round griddle. Great for cooking pizzas. Great. Next two griddles I've got, removable wooden handles. This is the rectangle one. And I've also got a square one. Right now we move into the pots. This is the small fondue pot. <clears throat> Great little user. I've got a good video on that one. And then I picked up later on a larger fondue pot. So I got this one cheaper than the small one. <clears throat> now the next one I got, I bought this as a three piece set. They sell as a five piece set out of Aldi. It's an Adventure Ridge series and it's exclusive to Aldi shopping centres. I ended up with the pot, and I ended up with a fry pan. This one is not cleaned. When I picked it up, they were all rusty. Here's a picture of it. And I didn't know any of the tests to do. And when I got in the light, there was a crack in this. So this just hangs on the wall now. It's a reminder to check for cracks. For fry pans, here's a tip. Sounds dull. If your cast hasn't got a crack in it, it'll ting like a cymbal. So good, good knowledge. Okay, so that completes part one of the cast iron collection. Part two should be below, and it's all my fry pans. Bar that one, of course. And this one. When I did the fry pan video, I forgot to add me Red Crofton. 
red enamel, again, given to me by my old man. So that goes up there with the enamel collection. So yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and tell your mates. Check out the next video. Roger D. Dickie